British royal family. One dynasty that has ruled over our great nation for over 1,200 years. But for all the pomp, circumstance, and ceremony, never has one family been so committed to slipping up, saying the wrong things, Mummy. and generally making gestures of themselves. Dig that crazy rhythm. So we're delving deep into the royal archives to dig out the funniest, <laughs> cringiest, and most embarrassing clips guaranteed to make them sweat, even those incapable of doing so. So, God save the Queen. And all the other royals, for that matter. Who the hell wrote this script? Please be upstanding for the arrival of royal family cock-ups. As the old proverb goes, never work with animals, children, or the Duchess of York. But let's for now focus on when animals break royal protocol. Polo, the world's oldest and poshest team sport and a favourite among royals. I think probably Harry, I would say, is, is the better sportsman, particularly on the polo pitch. I've never played polo, uh, despite appearance, but, like, the, the thing about this, and this just summarises polo to me, if you're rich enough to have ridden a horse, can probably just get on the team. Prince Harry here, having a mare, on a mare. On the offside, now leaves it open. For the man you don't want to leave it open to. It's time now. He's literally just missed the ball and fallen off the horse. Always very hard to style something out while wearing jodhpurs, I've found. Harry was never the most gifted polo player on earth. I mean... For the man you don't want to leave it open to. It's time now. Here's Princess Anne running amok on Margate Beach, one of the first royals to combine horse riding and long jump. Come on, girl, you ride that horse. I've been on a donkey before. She's a really, really good rider, isn't she? She really is. Wasn't she an Olympian? That's it, girl. floor there like with a lot of a lot of impact <laughs> <laughs> utmost respect for the horse <laughs> doesn't she fall well like a real professional <laughs> oh and half don't flinch and continue to take photos very professional <laughs> They go to her like it's an afterthought. Oh, naff off, naff off. I know you care more about that damn horse than you do me. Go on, off you go. Oh, it's too late now. Naff off. You know what's incredibly unhelpful? If you fell off a horse and people just come around you and just hold your arm, that'll help. Just hold the arm. That'll help her overcome the huge spinal trauma she just suffered by falling off a moving animal. She's a game girl. She just gets up, dusts herself off, and continues with it as if nothing happened. No fuss. While we're discussing Anne's falling prowess, I must point out that she also struggles to stay upright on two feet, let alone four. <laughs> an embarrassing banana skin slip up for Anne there. I give her an eight for execution, but only a five for the landing. Princess Anne isn't the only expert royal rider. Prince Philip has always had a huge passion for carriage driving. The Duke of Edinburgh was very sportive. He was a great equestrian. He was a great polo player. He still does carriage driving. I know because he drives with friends of mine. Here he is talking to his horses with his usual tact and grace. didn't take too kindly to being called an idiot. <laughs> could be worse, he could be driving a Range Rover. Just a small bump in the road there, Your Royal Highness. That is so scary. That horse has since been chosen in the 
ஆறு interpretive dance that's an old army technique here's the queen of the premier of the fast and the furious tokyo drift but this little pony got a right royal telling off when he tried to munch on her marigolds a little horse is what you get if you shout at shetlands wherever the queen goes she's accompanied by her corgis Handily, she can stow them in the overhead compartments when they're being stubborn. Prince Philip was always bewildered why the Queen had so many corgis. In my day, we had nine. And very often, Prince Philip was trying to get from his room into the Queen's room, with all the corgis barring his way. He'd be pushing the door open and swearing at the same time, saying, I don't know why you have so many corgis. To which the Queen would look over her glasses and say, but darling, they're so collectible. You know we had a saying at Buckingham Palace horses dogs husband and kids and that was the pecking order and then Camilla the young prince edward more than happy to take matters into his own hands the queen isn't the only lady who lives in a castle and loves dogs okay oh nikki come on oh, yes i love you too. oh yes best love in the world is matty's love for baby and baby love for matty but come on you need to go back Here are William and Harry getting fitted for scarves on their first day at Eton. Lovely old tradition. Harry thinks this is hysterical. <laughs> When we were in Africa in 2010, I remember being at a conservation park with them, and that there was a photo opportunity for them to have a huge python round their necks. I think it was Harry who had the head, and you know he was sort of pointing it at William. You can see William just sort of like you know, well, careful, brother. <laughs> They made for beautiful pictures. Here was Team Wales playing up and really, really giving great press. Spiky, with distinctive features and known to form mating trains during breeding season, Harry is one of the most popular members of the royal family. Here he is with an echidna. Next up, we look at how the royal family deal with children, and we have a look at some embarrassing dancing. Excruciating, though. Excruciating. Welcome back to Royal Family Cockups. A borderline treasonous look at the highs and lows of life as part of the hub. The younger generation and their on-camera mishaps. Good job kids don't embarrass easy. A classic clip of Prince Harry cementing his relationship with the world's media. The royal children are naughty sometimes. I love that when they get caught on camera because it's just so natural. You know, they haven't learned to behave a certain way. They're just children being children and it's quite sweet that they're allowed to be as well. I think Prince Harry's I mean hilarious here, the way he deals with the, the press. Look at that. Look at that his little cheeky chaffy. He was an adorable little boy, naturally loving and very jovial. Harry was never calmed down. Harry was just left to be Harry. But both boys inherited their mother's sense of humor. I've no doubt about that. It's a pity that he wasn't reined in more and given discipline because he had a wonderfully natural personality that with the right amount of discipline would have behooved him well throughout life. But kids will always be kids and will do as they please even when on duty. I think the kids are just normal kids. They're not always very 
eight to photographers, but good for them. They are just normal kids who haven't necessarily learned the royal protocol yet. It's not just the sticky tongue out insult that Charlotte sends the press. She also throws shade with her words, too. <laughs> she really has perfected her death stare. Now for a little royal inside knowledge. When the rules come onto the balcony at Buckingham Palace, the palace street isn't that high, but the little ones can't see over it. So little crates are placed on the other side for the littlies to stand on so that they can wave too. I think the royals need to upgrade their health and safety standards, Paul. Ooh, child. Case in point. Wills is completely distracted, plotting his payback for Harry's snake prank. At least the Queen bothered to glance. Princess Charlotte here again, this time in Germany for an official visit, asking for something trifling like 15 white ponies, the mummy saying no. Oh yeah, that's it, go for the tantrum. Cos you're wrong, it don't mean you don't get... You dash yourself on that floor. Yeah, you pick her up and try and contain it. Takes me back to where my children were that age. And yes, yes, children do throw tantrums and good mothers don't put up with it. No matter how... Look. I'd give them a look and they'd, they'd get like right up again. When it comes to the discipline, you better know yourself. Sometimes royal etiquette goes completely out the window. Like when Savannah takes matters into her own hands when her young cousin George won't shut up. But it's not always playtime for the royal kids. George leaving a commoner hanging. His ancestors would be so proud. Prince William, however, loves talking to strangers. He even offers them kisses. But despite being an heir to the throne, not everyone wants to be his princess. Let's see that again in slow motion. William is rejected hard. Imagine what it must feel like to reject a kiss from the future King of England. But let's find out. It's funny and embarrassing at the same time. Because it's funny that I did it, but it's like embarrassing that I wanted to kiss him. She had been looking forward to it all day, and she obviously just got stage fright, and she got all embarrassed and just hid inside my neck and would not turn back around again to speak to anybody. She was all over Sky News before we even managed to get home. And I was getting phone calls from friends that I've got. Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And I like saw him again. I think I wouldn't ask for a kiss, I'd just see if he remembered me. And it's going to be great for when she's 18 and 21 and has a big birthday party and we can pull all the photographs out and have them all over the wall and remind her about it. Yeah, I can always look back and, and like, just be like, well, I rejected Prince William. In an argument, anyone brings anything up about me, I can just say that to them. Prince William's awkwardness continues in this world exclusive, never before seen footage of him being royally embarrassed at an American theme park in 1993. I'm pretty sure with this clip, HRH stands for his royal humiliation. We've all been there, having a lovely time enjoying the after-dinner entertainment, when suddenly you're picked to be part of the show. Mortifying. I don't think looking at your feet is going to get you out of this one, William. To humiliate him further, they've now provided an oversized waistcoat and cowboy hat. Maybe no one will recognize you as the future King of England. To make matters worse, a cheeky kiss and an attempt at an American accent. Hey, we're not here on the show, baby. Such a flirt. A forced wave to mummy now, just what every 11-year-old boy wants to do in public. Finally, a bow to end the indignity, although slightly rushed for some so experienced. I wonder where that certificate is hanging now. Perhaps on the next scene stealer steals the scene more than any scene stealer before him. How sweet is that little boy? He's like, ha! <laughs> A sweet, cheeky, utterly toothless, gappy, smiling page boy and Brian Mulroney um, stealing the scene absolutely unwittingly. I think he captured the joy and the mood of the nation.
Or maybe he'd just be looking at Pippa's bottom. Oh, God. Oh, now you're just being mean. See, that's why he should have been with me. Do you know what I mean? I mean, him could have... Kids and banner. Sorry, Megan. Anytime. This children's choir not only sing to entertain Her Majesty, they also perform their own stunts. Don't worry, no children were hurt in the making of this program. Here's a young lady dressed in her best traditional Welsh attire to impress Her Majesty. Textbook curtsy. Aww. And put, put your skirt down, babe. My mother always said, don't stand too close to soldiers. No, wait. You have to play it again. Did I see what I think? Did she just get... Look at that. Look at that. She just got absolutely... <sighs> she won't be doing that again, will she? I met the Queen, and then I got thumped up. As a near professional dancer myself, I recognise the need to express yourself. However, there's nothing like a royal dance move to make you want to cringe yourself inside out. Don't believe me? Have a look. How many times have you seen the future King of England thrusting in a post office queue? Well, you're in luck, because here's Charles auditioning for art in the full Monty. Oh, no. No. Come on, Charlie, that's the half Monty. Bit more oomph, please. <laughs> it's the hip thing, isn't it? I mean... Imagine making him do a... <laughs> the lady in green is seconds away from overpowering his security and joining in. You could see it too. Sadly, Prince Charles never took to the stage with the full Monty. Perhaps for good reason. Stripping clearly wasn't his thing, so maybe he thought breakdancing would be more his style. Oh, no. Don't do this. Oh! Charles, Prince. <laughs> Is he going to copy what they're doing? Oh. OK. Yeah! Oh. Excruciating, Will. Excruciating. <laughs> As an awkwardly positioned white guy, what posh white guy, I can't really sort of criticise another awkwardly positioned posh white guy trying to dance. But I'll say it anyway, he looks very awkward. Not as awkward as Charles's aides, whose rigid stances and fixed smiles are hiding a multitude of faults. I'll drop my ratchet ass down the, down the floor. Oh, he's on the floor. No, he's gonna limbo. Don't limbo, babes. <laughs> It's almost too cringe to watch. What was he thinking? Give him life. <laughs> so deeply unsexy. What a sport. He's such a sport. Not sure what he was trying to do. I mean, really? Prince Charles? Breakdancing? No, we don't need that. We really don't need that. And just three short years later, he was a fully paid up member of Run DMC. Third time's the charm for our dancing king with a bit of Latin flair at the Rio Carnival in Brazil. I'm sure that smile has nothing to do with the semi-naked beautiful women dancing with him. What? That's his favourite move. He's really going for it in this clip, much more so. Maybe because there's a lady involved. He's, you know, he's had a few glasses of Bollinger, I don't know what they drink, gold, something like that. And, and he's, just, he's just going for it. And, and, and it's, it's lovely to see. This is a different Charles to when we saw him trying to do the little hip hop. He was a little bit like, oh no, 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 no. This one, he was like, yes, I don't care the camera's head. It's the sweat out hair bit, that bit. You know, someone's having a good time when his hair, which is usually, you know, in a nice position, just dangles down. While we're talking awkward Charles moments, 
No amount of dreadful overacting can disguise the excruciating embarrassment he's causing himself while he play fights with an old bag, partaking in some rather unsightly sucking and blowing. His fellow actors think he's lost it. Right, more royal cock-ups still to come, including these famous faux pas. So disrespectful. Welcome back to Royal Family Cock-Ups. So far, we've had slips, trips, and thrusts. And that's just the first two parts. Next on the dance floor is Prince Harry, proving he's got just as much rhythm as his father. <laughs> this, for me, is the epitome of Prince Harry. You know, don't really know what I'm doing, but I'll just do it anyway with a smile. You know, and just kind of, am I leaving the kids? Are the kids leaving me? I don't know, but I'll just do it anyway. That girl behind Harry is all of us. Watching on, hands on head, barely able to look. Now, this isn't technically a cock-up, but if you had to show an alien one clip that represented Britishness, this next one would be a good place to start. Toffs in differing uniforms, bobbing up and down in the rain in a perspex box. There's Charles keeping relatively good time tapping his sword. Camilla is certainly giving it her all, bopping up and down. The Queen is, quite rightly, choosing a more demure approach. Really going for it. Why is this so cute? Like, it's so sweet. The Queen, Prince Philip, the Prince of Wales, and the Duchess of Cornwall having a little jig a, to a sea shanty. <laughs> it's fabulous, and they're all sort of bob. They're all having a very good time, very toe tapping. William and Catherine don't strike me as the most agile movers in the firm. Mind you, this footage from Tuvalu in 2012 might prove me wrong. I really love this footage. This is quite early on in the marriage, and, you know, I don't think many people had gotten to see that fun side to the Duchess. Oh, I love this. She's just so natural, isn't she? I was a bit embarrassed at the start. I was getting really into it. She's having a great time. This has the, the energy of, like, um, a couple on a gap year, and they've had some wacky-backy or magic mushrooms, and she's like, yeah, I'm feeling really quite good. Yeah, why is everything so funny? <laughs> Has anyone got any bread? I'm really hungry. You can see that the atmosphere there is really, really something. Everybody's on a kind of natural high. Are you sure it's a natural high, Deborah? Maybe I'm not sure about that, actually, now I'm looking at William. Oh, my gosh. Whoa, he's a bit of a groover, actually. <laughs> That's also, Will's gay. Will actually can dance, as you can see in that clip. He's like, I'm having the time of my life, and I don't care who knows it. Yeah, has anyone got that bread you asked for? He might be able to dance, Josh, but it looks like he took style advice from Paul Burrell. I think people love to see the Royals having a good time. And as you can see from that clip, Clearly, William and Kate threw themselves into it and had a great time. There's something about this scene that makes me think of that pagan horror film, Midsummer. Hmm. But the royally born aren't the only ones forced into awkward dancing situations. It's Camilla's turn to bust a move on the dance floor. Or cafeteria, in this case. Oh, my gosh, the things that I have to do. This is why I didn't want to be in the royal family. Oh, gosh. And all the time I've got to smile and think of England. Like her mind saying, come on, left, left, no, darling, this is right. Nobody going in a circle. Right, left, or circle. Two of them are what? No, I just... <laughs> a group number on Strictly, this isn't. Charles is going to pay for this. Just think of the throne. You're going to be queen. Queen Camilla. Queen Camilla. Queen Camilla. Queen Camilla. Queen Camilla. Queen Camilla. The firm leaving the sanctuary of their castles 
and forced to interact with the general public while on tour can lead to some right royal cock-ups. A royal visit to the recording of The Voice Canada now. I now introduce the throat singer. He's looking at her like she's on another planet. Forming the ancient Inuit art of throat singing. These tours are quite intense, that you cannot be on guard all the time. Sometimes the mask slips. And I think it's when the mask slips that you get um, probably the most fun moments of the tour. It is nice for the royals every now and then to break through that barrier and to give us a peep at their humour. Because, after all, they are human. <laughs> intimate, isn't it? <laughs> She's going, I can't. Charles, I... He's going, what's the matter with you? She's going, you just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> I'm not sure Camilla would spin her chair for this performance, although maybe it would be helpful if she did. She's pulled out her glasses. Rich Charles is like, <laughs> She's actually really struggling there. <laughs> oh no, that's really too much. <laughs> He's handling this better than me. <laughs> <laughs> She's lost it. You know, it's acknowledged as one of the most complex human vocalizations. Whether Camilla appreciates it or not, it's art. That's what we need to remember. <laughs> Just thank God Philip's not there. <laughs> wow. You know, there are times when it's funny because it's not funny. And, but equally, you're supposed to find it funny, so you do find it funny because it's not funny. Are you talking about the singing or this show? We're very honoured to have the Majesty of the Queen with us today. Who said the Queen wasn't relatable? There's nothing. Script's in hand. She's ready to go. Oh, dear. At least she saw the funny side. She kept calm and carried on. When meeting the Queen, it can be a minefield of protocol and etiquette. So if you're going to do it, you require intelligence and a sense of decorum. Ah, Here's Katie Nichol to remind us of the royal etiquette when walking with Her Majesty. You will always see the Queen go first, and that is incredibly important. No one goes before the Queen. Remember that? Donald Trump? I'm sure even he can understand those simple instructions. Can't he? La, 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 la. I'm bigly phenomenal. I'm so great. Look at me walking along. I'm walking. I actually invented walking. Not a lot of people know that. I invented walking and pointing like a child. I'm so bigly great. Fake news, fake news. Well, normally it's ladies first, but I don't trust you bringing up the rear. Get out the way, you pillock. Look at their fluffy hats. I like them. Oh, for God's sake, you've been briefed, you idiot. He's not even thinking about where is she. She's so tiny, but it's like, know your place! I need to do a, a voiceover of that with a patwa. Where am I walk around me for? You know, somebody had a queen, yeah, walk around me. Me said, move, move him! Damn idiot. Oh my God, that's just so awkward to watch that Trump thing. It's just so awful, isn't it? So disrespectful. From one bumbling presidential buffoon to another. Oh no, not this prize plum. Now what's he going to say? I'd like to thank the Queen of the United Kingdom of States. You helped our nation celebrate its bicentennial. 17 and 1976. What did he just say? You helped our nation celebrate its bicentennial in 17 and 1976. <laughs> what a plum. How dare he add 200 years onto our monarch? I think she's aging beautifully. Oh, she gave me a look that only a mother could give a child. When the queen gives you that look, you are immediately in check. I mean, it's a look which requires no words whatsoever. No prizes for guessing who gets the very same look across the family dining table. After an encounter with that ambling American, 
a state dinner in the company of Canada's hunky Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, would have come as a more palatable prospect. Although, in a pre-dinner speech, Mr. Trudeau reminded the Queen that he was the 12th Prime Minister of Canada during her reign. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, for making me feel so old. <laughs> and she has dancing eyes. Just look at those eyes. They dance with delight. They dance with life. You can see she's looking to have a good time. She's looking to get the best out of any situation. And the Queen isn't the only royal keen to put Mr. Trudeau in his place. High fives are so 90s. It's all about the fist bump now, JT. Look at that, Justin Trudeau trying to, trying to win over Prince George, but he's having none of it. I'm so glad to see that Prince George already displays impeccable taste and judgment. As the Cambridges prepare to depart, you can just about see Justin gritting his teeth, knowing he's been royally upstaged by Sprog. There's nothing you can do. You know, this is a little child who doesn't want to play ball. He will make a very good king. If this is how he's starting out, long may he continue on that path. Meghan quickly realised that living life in the fast lane and being part of the firm has its thrills and spills. She hasn't been that shocked by something going off unexpectedly since their wedding night. <laughs> Princess Diana here on her theme park day out with her two boys. This particular clip is a favourite of mine because I was there. I was on the next log coming down the flume. When you see the princess come down first, she turns the corner, she looks up and she says to the boys, look, they're coming down now. And there was me and my two boys in the next log getting drenched. She loved every second of that. Di's having a whale of a time, but I think the boys are turning a gray green color. I think, you know, this, this was pure Diana. This wasn't Princess of Wales. This was Diana as a mother. I mean, you could just see the joy in her face, the, you know, the tears of laughter, the kids absolutely loving it. This is a perfect example of Diana wanting her boys to have a normal life. And this is her being, being a mum rather than a future it's actually some of my favourite footage of, of Diana. It really shows her as the fabulous mother and the fun-loving person that she was. Di hadn't had this much fun since she witnessed Charles attempting to break dance. <laughs> to Heathrow now in 1985, when Princess Diana was invited to watch a demonstration of the airport's drug sniffer dogs at work. It's a very determined dog. Amazing how he found out his bag so quickly. The dog's just thinking, give me the fix, give me the fix, give me the fix, give me the fix. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I think maybe it's got a little bit too much drugs in the case. Dog drug addiction is a sad reality and it's not spoken about enough. Princess Diana nervously looking on. Could be anybody's bag. <laughs> oh, gets the heroin out. Hmm. What sort of a party is this? This is like a classic 90s news clip, the sort of moral panic around heroin and drugs. And a little Cirque du Soleil just to finish off the drugs bust. Oscar the drugs dog, very good at finding heroin, but unfortunately addicted to it. People won't realise that for an engagement like that, weeks of planning go into it. Um, but you cannot prepare for the unexpected. <laughs> the princess is just in fits of giggles and eventually is escorted away from... Engagement, but you know she will she will have laughed about that for a long time afterwards. Oscar the heroin dog was going to be assisted by the cannabis corgi, but unfortunately he was in the next room having a mellow sesh and chomping on protein-based treats. This is so sad. The dog is addicted. It's addicted. It was fully invested in taking home the drugs. And that is that for part three. Time to go for a royal wee. <laughs> Join us after the break for more Royal Family Cock-Ups.
Welcome back to Royal Family Cockups. A look at the Royal Family as narrated by me, Giles Brandreth. <laughs> and sadly, not the other way around, despite my repeated protestations. It's not just us average Joes who go weak at the knees at the thought of catching a glimpse of the crown jewels. Even global superstars want a piece of the royal pie. Those offended by a public flouting of royal etiquette rules should look away now. This is probably the most famous clip of breaching royal protocol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's so cringe, isn't it? <laughs> that was the last time anyone saw Posh smile. <laughs> Charles hasn't been publicly embarrassed like this since he last tried breakdancing. A kiss on the cheek, perhaps, but a pinch on the bottom, a bit too far. If at first you don't succeed, try again. It's just not the way that you treat people, is it? And just watch the PPO's face as the Prince of Wales' bum is being pinched. He didn't enjoy that at all, did he? Perhaps a little bit too close to the royal personage, or maybe the crown jewels. Typically in history, if you pinched the royal cheeks, you'd be hanged, drawn and quartered, which was also the name of the girl band at the time. To Jamaica now, where the world's fastest man has a royal showdown with Eaton's fastest ginger. This doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Poor Usain Bolt, he fell for the oldest trick in the book. Wouldn't be the first time he's faced a cheat, though, would it? <laughs> 9.58 seconds is also roughly how long Prince Harry would last in the Jamaican sun. As a royal, it's almost second nature to end up in embarrassing situations. Take this, for example. Bon Jovi, Taylor Swift and Prince William indulging in the weirdest karaoke of all time. Ooh, Taylor's outfit, boy! <laughs> Wait, is, is he going to dance? Why do I feel nervous? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a man look as on edge as Prince William does there. Just constantly, oh, doing my time, doing my time. I touch my nose and oh, just, it just feels so uncomfortable. You know that moment when you're sweating on your palms, you can see, oh, oh. Poor Prince William, I identify, I've been in situations like that, you're just thinking, oh, my God, how can I get this to end quickly and retain at least a little bit of my dignity without making a complete idiot of myself? William just mouthing the words to God save the Queen and hope for the best. so uncomfortable. He did okay in the end. But he should have come to me for little shoulder movements. Would have torn a little bit better than that. The iconic trio of Taylor Swift, Bon Jovi and Prince William. The bands no one asked for and no one wanted. I'm surprised they didn't change the words to living as an heir. Harder, faster, bolder ginger, when the messiah met the princess. But they've clearly learnt their lesson from past fashion faux pas. They're having none of it. William and Harry can name drop all they want, but they'll never get one up on their grandparents. This is one ultimate power couple meeting another ultimate power couple. At least, Philip's there to show them who's boss, reminding the Obamas that it's rude to have your backs turned to the cameras. Say cheese. No matter the occasion, Philip always succeeds in flustering the females. The Duke himself who decided that they should spend the actual day of their anniversary on Malta for this very private of public couples. Quite a romantic gesture. <laughs> 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 on the
on the occasions where I've met Prince Philip, I have to tell you, I've thought he's just great. He's very witty, he's very funny, he tries to turn every occasion into an occasion that's going to be fun. There was always a witty one-liner, there was always something that would happen that wasn't scripted, that often made the Queen laugh, that certainly made us laugh, certainly made the people that Prince Philip was meeting laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Now it's time for a check on the weather with the meteorological monarch himself. Long to reign over us, it's Prince Charles. Who the hell wrote this script? Uh, as the afternoon goes on, the best of the drier and brighter weather will, of course, be over the Northern Isles. I think all of the roles have different ways of showing their sense of humour. Some of them a really, like, tight mid. But a cold day everywhere with temperatures of just eight Celsius and a brisk northeasterly wind. Prince Charles has got a little bit more leeway. Um, I think the ones that are coming up are a little bit more nervous um, on how to and when to. Thank God it isn't a bank holiday. <laughs> OK, so we know William likes to sing badly, but can he dance? Thankfully, this was put to the test at the 2017 Royal Variety Show in front of nearly five million viewers. Back off. Is there someone that you wanted to ask to gallop? I don't know, they could do maybe a seated gallop or a standing gallop. I love Miranda. Love Miranda? Is there someone that you wanted to ask? Please, sir, will you gallop with us? The way that William puts his head in his hands, he's probably not expecting this, and he flushes really easily, William. He always colours up really quickly, like his dad. Oh, he does! He does gallop! Oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what have I done? And he can't gallop! Your life. Well, how could he possibly say no to that face? To find out more about this unusual royal request, we headed over to Essex to meet the gal who got William to gallop. Hello, sir. It's me, Nicole. Come in our house. Nicole Sabibi. I'm 10 years old and I live with my mum, my dad and my two sisters, Alyssa and Amy. I joined an agency at my dance school and then I was asked to audition for Annie the Musical for the role of Molly. Oh my gosh, I got uh, the prince to actually gallop. It was really cool. I think it was like the day before the actual performance. Like we all, like the people find, finding out that we had lines and stuff. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to like to him. Oh, you're so nervous. It's not every day that you get to talk to a royal. I was like practicing it with my friends, making sure I don't mess up my words. Please, sir, will you gallop with us? 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 <laughs> he looked pretty funny doing it. <laughs> So I knew that she was, she had a few lines. I didn't realise she was going to dress the prince. I think she smashed it, she nailed it. Obviously we're very proud, we were very proud parents to, to see her on stage. I don't think he could have said no to me. She does have a very sweet, sweet voice. At the time, I didn't really think it was a big deal. And then everybody kept on saying, oh my gosh, you did what? And then um, I realised just how much a big of a deal that was. It was an achievement, like, oh my gosh, I got uh, the prince to do something. The future king of England. <laughs> yeah, to actually gallop. Hello, Prince William. <laughs> if I did see Prince William again, I would get him to do some funny dance moves, like the robot, or, or maybe the floss even. Please, sir, will you pirouette for me? <laughs> we saw him and Princess Kate coming out and going into their car. We just started going like this, and she waved at us. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a member of the royal family, one thing you're sure to be good at is a right royal opening. Hours are spent pulling on strings and drawing back drapes. But don't be fooled, there's always a cunning cock-up lurking behind the curtain. While the Queen always gives a good tug, the same can't be said for her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. Pay attention because I'm now going to see the world's most experienced plaque unveiled. <laughs> he was very confident in that line, like, they said, I'm, I'm, I'm the chief out here. Because I'm now going to see the world's most experienced plaque unveiled. <laughs> 
done it so often he's doing it badly now. <laughs> How can a man who's unveiled thousands of plaques be this bad at unveiling plaques? This is despite his immodest self-titling. You're about to see the world's most experienced plaque unveiler at work. This has got to be the oldest one-liner that the joke has always turned to, you know. But then when you're opening plaque after plaque, I mean, how many different things can you think of to say? I'm sure he uses it in all contexts as well. You're about to witness the most experienced ribbon cutter, the most experienced hospital visitor, the most experienced lovemaker. How do we think you'll fare this time? Come on, sir, you've got this. Oh, dear. This bloke isn't helping at us either. <laughs> Cheeky, had a look before you could start. He can't even be trusted when the Queen's around. What was he hoping to find? Let's see if they've passed on their skills to the children. Here's the heir to the world's most experienced plaque on Vela Throne, giving it a go. There's nothing could give me more pleasure than to unveil this plaque. Wondering what on earth it's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it seems they haven't. <laughs> Poor Prince Charles. <laughs> it doesn't always go to plan, does it? <laughs> oh, I dropped it. What a plunker. He just looks around like he's never picked up anything in his life. Most people's reaction would just to be to go and pick it up, but people have always done that for him, haven't they? <laughs> that is clearly very much entitlement that his father doesn't have. Maybe that's a job for Camilla, then. He's the size of a postage He's the size of a postage stamp. I've never seen a plaque so small. You know, I think I speak for everyone when I say, what a rubbish plaque. Let's give Charlie another go, shall we? <laughs> That's if he can even gain access to the curtain. I've been reliably informed by a person who's not here at the moment, just in case it goes wrong, you yank on that little clock. Come on. It's <laughs> mate. <laughs> Spoke too soon, Father. <laughs> the priest had always longed to embarrass the prince, and here he very much succeeded. <laughs> Surely the grandchildren have learnt from their elders' mistakes. <laughs> there's every chance that there's no plaque and they're just unveiling a pair of velvet curtains. Although part of me hopes this is a plaque honouring the Chuckle Brothers. To me, to you, to me, no, to you. Who's this? Someone after their 15 minutes of fame by stealing all the limelight? How embarrassing. Come on, Harry. Your family's reputation is riding on this. So I'd like to formally invite you to pull the left-hand side and unveil the plaque of commemorative plaque of this occasion. And you're on the wrong side. Great start. Not even the spin and glide technique can distract us from that cock-up. Kudos to the person who donated their rah-rah skirt for the special occasion. Coming up, in the time it takes for William's hair to recede another two inches, Liz and Phil go on the rampage. Welcome back to Royal Family Cock Ups. So far, we've had some bad dancing, dad dancing, and break dancing. I, for one, am excited to see what's next. The royals have been renowned fashion icons through the ages. From their tiaras to their tuxes, they rarely step a foot wrong. But when they do, it ends up on a comedy clip show just like this one. With so many fashion faux pas to choose from, we wanted to bring you a top of the frocks countdown of the worst royal fashion disasters. As read by our very own Josh Berry. He put me out of a job. Straight in at number five, this red carpet howler. The Queen is known for her bold, bright colours, but Princess Anne's fashion choices here seem to have been influenced by her heavy fall earlier on. Shocking. Going down and directly into the bin, this classic is at number four. Whilst the Queen is used to her children being a stain on her good name, for once her soup technique seems to have let her down. No account if it no matter how much money you spend on it, it's number three. Princess Diana clearly taking style tips from wimpy waitresses worldwide in this particular get-up. 
I'm passionate about looking the part and dressing for the part and being dressed appropriately. It's important to wear the right clothes for the right occasion. It's been my life, really. I mean, having dressed the most famous, iconic princess in the world, I think I have quite a reputation to hold up. I certainly hope you didn't dress that on this occasion, Paul. Pip to the post to number two, it's this Shock Frog Fright Fest. Drawing in an audience of 60 million viewers, there was only one question on everyone's lips at the wedding of William and Kate in 2011. What on earth is that on Princess Beatrice's head? Maybe it's a tribute to the artist formerly known as Prince. No, not Harry, the other one. And still riding high at number one, it's right to the town for this all-time froggy horror show fave. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere by storm. That bright orange duvet slung around her shoulders was the biggest fashion mistake of all time. It looks as if it's about to eat her. It's enormous and inappropriate. A true fashion faux pas fit for our top spot at number one. Yeah, if I'm honest, I don't really think there's any, like, bad moments of fashion that I've seen in the royal family. I've never seen them, you know, turn up in a little bit of stretch jeans. I've never seen the queen turn up in leggings, do you know what I mean? A little night top or a little titty hanging out. No, I've never, I've never seen that from any of them. Sorry, it's the old school Jamaican in me. <laughs> oh. One mustn't forget that without the love and support of the citizens of the world, the royal family would be lost. But that's not to say that their subjects are not subject to the odd cock-up from time to time. Like this gentleman, for example, who is nervously about to introduce Princess Anne for her pre-dinner speech. Welcome, Her Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, to our... <laughs> I think you mean the Princess Royal, don't you? Welcome. Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, to our... <laughs> Princess Anne showed her forgiving side as she ordered him to be thrown from only the second floor of Windsor Castle. The actual Prince of Wales now, visiting key workers at a supermarket distribution centre. But the gentleman meeting the future king seems a little overwhelmed by the occasion. This is fabulous, Charles. Uh, hello. We're in, we're in Asdes. That's some sort of waste disposal thing, I think, isn't it? Look at this bloke, he, he, he's, he's, this is his moment. All right, oh, he was swinging about a bit. Oh. 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 Typical photographer trying to jump in and get the money shot. She's having none of it. Oh my gosh! Do you think it was made me nervous? <sighs> Prince Charles is well known to have that effect on people, which might explain his somewhat carefree attitude. The best thing I think about this clip is, is how Prince Charles sort of just seems to go, oh, oh dear, a peasant seems to have died, and sort of sees very briefly if he's all right, and then just totally moves on. Oh, 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 he's dead, fine. So what do you do? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm getting up and get out of the right. Oh, Derek, you've absolutely balls that one up, you idiot. You'll be delighted to know, after dusting himself off, the employee... But fear not, fine sir. Even the professionals fall flat on their face in royal company. He now has a red face to match his jacket. At least hundreds of people don't turn up to watch the changing of the guard every day. The roller skates addition to the uniform was not well received. I've had a few people fall over and they've, yeah, seen me. They tripped, but that's not the point. Charles isn't the only royal to the public fall head over heels for him. People go weak at the knees when they meet Harry, too. Everywhere I went with Prince Harry when we travelled on tour, you would see Harry mania. You would see girls, women, grandmothers holding up banners. We love you, Harry. And he loved it. <gasps> One Direction moment as well. Oh, no. Oh, that's so embarrassing, isn't it? Prince Harry is so humble, given that that's what he's able to do. You know, what he should really be like is, I'm Prince Harry, people actually, like, 
you know, lose it when they, when they see me and are around me. So, yeah, I'm a pretty big deal. I'm pretty good at giving hugs, I guess. Free hugs for everyone. Hug for you, a handshake for you, maybe a hug. Everyone else is just sort of like, hi, really nice to meet you. This is great. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> she is shaking. I know what you mean, girl, because when I kind of met Take That when I was younger, I was off, I was off, I was off, girl. It was like a little Take That moment, wasn't it? It was like, oh my God. She's completely taken over by the moment, and she's physically shaking after the moment. What is that? Complete adoration of a member of the royal family. Certain members of the public have very extreme reactions because that's their personality. It does not behoove the public figure to forget that it's not about them. You don't drive people crazy. Some people are just more excitable than others. Slight little feeling of jealousy. I knew I should have cried when I nearly saw him. I knew it. I get that a lot too, the sobbing. The Duke of Edinburgh is famously forthcoming with his opinions, even when he visits primary schools. Let's just say not much of Harry or Will's art would have made it onto the Windsor Fridge. Classic Philip. What can I tell you? That's why I love the Duke of Edinburgh. No mucking around. It's fair to say that Prince Philip. <laughs> As a royal, you have to maintain a stiff upper lip at all times, even when infants are trying to steal your flowers. It will evidently be some years before he learns that you give flowers to a lady, not take them away. The Queen is ever the professional, and she is all forgiving. Really, she's the nicest person you could ever wish to meet. And this little boy broke all royal protocol when he refused to let go of the Queen's hand during a routine handshake. I think the Queen has got a lot of bants. Yeah, she's a little cheeky, but she might give you a little eye just to say, I see you, like proper Queen. One does not look amused. He was later fed to the swans. Do you remember the days when we could shake hands? Like we could actually physically shake hands and say hi. Close out. <sighs> Those days are done. The royals are well known to have a good if not slightly curious, sense of humour. It seems they have a penchant for the peculiar, as highlighted during a special musical performance at Clarence House in 2010. It's a very old instrument, and it consisted of an organ of cats, which was... Which was... <laughs> cats! Oh, yes, how uh, exciting. <laughs> it's funny the things that they find funny. The cat organ actually played to Prince Charles's rather strange, goonish sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> he can't contain himself! <laughs> Most of the royals have a fine sense of the ridiculous. They find silly things funny. Camilla looks lost, like, is this really funny to you guys? I'm just... Pull yourself together, it's not that bloody funny. Oh, musical Pussycats has always been his favourite. <laughs> we played at home all the time. Oh. <laughs> I don't even think he's playing, like, this cat piano or whatever instrument he's called it. I think he's just making the sound, like, with his mouth. Like, that's... I mean... How hard can it be? Anyone can do that. Look. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. OK, wait a second. Meow, meow, meow. Wait, I've lost my tone. To prove to you that this gentleman is not, in fact, making these noises with his mouth, as beautifully demonstrated by Judy. Hello, welcome to my studio. If you come in, my name is Henry Dagg, and I'm a musician who composes, performs, and develops new instruments and sound sculptures. And this is what uh, I make do with for the time being as a studio. Occasionally, I, I need to wheel in the catastrophe for rehearsals. 
As it happens, this is the 10th anniversary of my performance at Clarence House. About the summer of, of 2010, I'd just been playing at a party with Jules Holland. A few weeks later, I got a call from Jules asking if I'd be interested in, in playing at a thing called the Start Festival uh, at Clarence House, organised by Prince Charles. It was a very interesting offer because I, I hadn't uh, ever been approached to do anything like this. It, it just sounded really interesting to do. I was just, just very happy to meet somebody I rated highly. And of course, uh, very, very notably, he, um, he asked me to, um, to play the Catastrophony. I, I didn't really think it was likely that, that any of my performances would be attended by any members of the royal family. I just, I just knew I was performing in their garden. I was quite amazed when I saw the, the reaction and saw them both wiping tears of, uh, of laughter away. I thought, wow, this is a serious privilege. You know, how many people have, have performed to the royal family and got that reaction? That's, that's, a, that's a little treasure that, that, um, that can never go away. You know, that's, that's a really unique little um, piece of history. I've always admired Prince Charles hugely for his stand on the environment. I've been a, a long-standing fan of his. So if Prince Charles is interested in having a, a reprise performance, I, I'd certainly think about it. Meow. Oh, meow. I'm sorry. Meow. Yeah, look, look. Let's listen. I've just shown you that anyone could do that. Do you know what I mean? Meow. We're going to try that one again. Meow. Oh, sorry. Coming up. <laughs> intense aristocratic rivalries of the like not seen since Mrs. Brandreth beat Mr. Brandreth in our inaugural family chess boxing tournament. That was a Christmas I'll never forget. <laughs> Welcome back to Royal Family Cockups. 67 years of gaffes and blunders condensed down into just two hours. William and Catherine visited a Cardiff care home where they previously hosted a virtual bingo event. You'd think the residents would be complimentary of the Royal's bingo lingo, but one resident couldn't help let her true feelings be known. You might not recognize the faces, but we did the bingo with you. Yes. You won. Yes. Yeah. But you said we didn't do a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's what I love about old people. It's just a complete, say it how it is, I'm, I'm gone soon anyway. So just, just look. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes and old people cometh forth wisdom and the truth. But you notice how both William and Catherine roll with the punches and take it in the spirit in which it was intended. <laughs> was it that bad? Was it the worst job you've ever seen? Don't come down. <laughs> It's the ultimate breach of royal protocol. You you don't swear in front of the royal. You probably don't tell them they've done a terribly bad job. You lie. Not not this lady who was very forthright in her assessment of, of William and Kate's bingo skills. They encouraged it perhaps a little bit too much. Everybody might start jumping on the bandwagon going, oh, what they really like. <laughs> they might be in the briefing. Man that rhymes with jam and um, swear as much as you can. <laughs> with the eyes of the world watching their every move, Family disputes and animosity can sometimes spill over into public events. The firm is laden with royal rivalries. No more so than the brotherly banter between Princes William and Harry. This is an iconic clip. Classic inter-brother bullying. I think both of us, he's definitely got more brains than me. I think we've established that from school, but when it comes to all that, I... I like, like Williams. Hand, I'm much got better hands-on. When you find solo. Boldness, sorry? When you find solo. <laughs> Ooh, that was below the belt, wasn't it? Boldness. Hand, I'm much better hands on. Yeah. When you find solo. Boldness, sorry? When you find solo. Harry slipped that one in neatly. Boldness. You feel as though at this stage of his life, Harry has a bit more ammunition against Will. Like, oh, you're bald. Oh. I mean, sadly, Prince Harry now mostly bald. Harry showing he means business today with that cutting comment on William's regrettable receding hairline. Did you just ever dig at the baldness? There's <laughs> <laughs> what, what, sorry? There's baldness. There's baldness. Yeah, so no. What's that? It's pretty rich coming from a ginger, so I'm quite happy to see that. Pretty rich coming from a ginger. It's pretty rich coming from a ginger, so I'm quite happy They really go for each other, don't they? There's no, like, oh, it's trying to be indirect. They're direct. And William showing he's no pushover. And clearly somebody in the crew has red hair. He's a good-looking ginger, sorry. Oh, break it up, you two. I guess it's classic brothers, really. There's definitely competition between the two of them and lots of banter. 
Harry in the army, William in the RAF, you know, there was always that banter, well, what's better? You know, I'm better because I'm the pilot in the RAF. No, I'm better because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fighting the Taliban or the British Army. And of course, that was one that Harry always had over William. Yep, William, you're going to be king. That means I can go and fight on the front line. Diana gave Prince Charles an heir and a spare. Harry was the spare. He's always lived up to that. And later in life, he would probably go down the wrong path because of that. William was steered always on his track. To monarchy. These royals play to win, but there. Many people said it was unfair, but I always thought a straight race was the best way of deciding who should be next in line to the throne. Harry and William obviously love their sport. Maybe they get it from their mum. She took part in that parents' race at school, didn't she? She certainly did, Deborah. Look at her. Shoes off, floaty dress, casually pretending that she hasn't been training at dawn for this for the last three months. And they're off. A cornucopia of early 90s school run fashion on display. And it's Diana from Floral Cardigan. Bandage out short skirt and business jacket is on the outside. Pearl earrings coming up fast. And it's Pearl earrings who takes it. In that big skirt. Did she really try to win? It was the skirt that held her back. Diana finishing in fourth. And sadly, two of the mums were disqualified after testing positive for Nandrolone. She is livid. And she should. Not even a medal winner. Here, the princes are preparing for a spot of polo. But one prince has found himself in a spot of bother, much to his brother's amusement. You're an idiot. Get this on camera. Ah, you forgot your boots. Oh, my God. That's another classic. Yeah, use one of my ones that Marcus got. Imagine forgetting one's riding boots at a polo match, and they say that the royals are out of touch. Could be worse. I once brought my horse to a game of water polo. Poor thing almost drowned. Yes, I'm not just doing it. I'm not just doing it for them, I always do it. <laughs> Charles and his boys used to have a very joshing relationship when they were growing up. Thank you, but I'm not surprised you scored a goal, actually. Surprised? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I like can that. do it even at my advanced stage of decrepitude. You're very good. <laughs> it's always been a very joshing relationship. Humour and, uh, you know, not necessarily wit. So much as joshing. I'm just making nuisance of myself. A nuisance of yourself? Yes, Pa. Sorry. That's not very difficult, is it? Well, it's hereditary, so. <laughs> Touche. Yes, even the heir to the throne isn't immune from a royal ribbing. I think most people think that Harry is the joker in the pack, and they never look towards William's sense of humour. He does have a sense of humour, but I'm sure it's played behind closed doors. In fact, it was William's mother who started off this trip back in 1986, when she and Prince Charles were given a tour around the smashing new Pinewood Studios. The old sugar glass. If you just... <laughs> Have a good day. Hit him on the ball spot. Sugar glass is quite strong. I've used it before. I haven't smashed anyone over the head with it, but I was told to be careful. I had to jump through a window. <laughs> <laughs> that she's going to have an opportunity of a lifetime. She was handed a fake glass bottle. You better give her two. <laughs> wow, well, years of pent-up frustration and emotion was racing through her veins as she smashed it on the Prince of Wales head. Oh, what pleasure that gave her. <laughs> You see, poor Charles, of course, knows what's coming and almost begs her, please, please. And she makes sure she obliges by giving him exactly what he doesn't want. Oh, that was a hard hit. That was a hard hit. I was like, maybe you've given me the wrong one. Maybe this one isn't sugar. It's actually glass. That was a hard hit. Can we watch that again? Too hard. <laughs> One wonders, knowing what of course we know now, whether Diana really did give it just that little bit extra blow onto Charles's head. I mean, clearly, he was going to be the only target for her that day. You begin to see a line from past to present. She loved it. She told me all about it. She said, I loved it. I just loved it. And everybody saw it. Imagine Diana's surprise when she realised the glass was fake. I think they should have that. You should have that. In every, like, six years of your...
marriage or relationship, you can go to a little retreat where you can just smash stuff over each other just to get the frustration out. Don't harm nobody. We're not advocating violence here. Just release of tension. <laughs> What started off, I'm sure, as friendly banter about the quality of Series 3 of Suits may have gone too far if this awkward interview is anything to go by. All the work you do together is great, but working together as family, do you ever have disagreements about things? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Megan just kind of went... <laughs> it is William's slightly awkward laugh that gives it all away and of course knowing what we know now about what at that time was really going on behind the scenes you know this is no family banter sort of digging at each other you know there was a major family feud yeah, healthy, healthy disagree. okay the last thing you disagree on how do you resolve it uh i can't remember they come so thick and thin. <laughs> But, it's, but it's, is it resolved? We don't know. Oh, we don't know. Well, you're putting on a great show if it's not. <laughs> putting on a great show? Wow. Oh, it makes me feel sad because in the end, whether they're royal or not, they're family, and it's just sad for a family to fall out. I think it's really good that, the, that we've got, you know, four, four different personalities and opinions, and I think those opinions work really, really well. <laughs> Girl, you know, just really low-level problems, definitely not, you know, massive disagreements that have been really you know, simmering under the surface. Working as, as family does have its challenges, of course it does. Everybody here, the fact that everyone's laughing means that everybody <laughs> knows exactly what it's like. It's not looking great. Kate stays so quiet as well, doesn't she? She doesn't give, she doesn't give much away. But, um, look, you know, we're, we're, we're stuck together for the rest of our lives, so... The body language between them is like, oh, God, <laughs> should I just keep... Togetherness, that it's Togetherness, fine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's together because the word at the back says together. Oh, together. Feels really ironic, doesn't it, now? Obviously, everything's fine, you know. We're not going to move to LA or anything. <laughs> On to William and Catherine channeling their inner Robin Hood. One of the things that the couple did in Bhutan was take um, part in a game of archery, which is one of the national games. By Joe, I hit him. I remember being there and watching Kate. She picked up um, the, the, the bow and arrow to shoot it, and it was meant to go in a straight line. <laughs> I mean, it just went so off course. I mean, I think at, at one point it almost looked like she was aiming for the photographers on the other side. That'll make them think twice about snooping around with a telephoto lens when she's sunbathing. For them, I think a lot of fun is had in those moments when it goes off script and the unexpected happens. In the next part, we've got swearing, uh, groping, he's goosed her, and Dad's DJ. Take that crazy rhythm. <laughs> Don't move a royal muscle. <laughs> Welcome back to Royal Family Cockups. Not one mention of the Duke of York yet. Is that about to change? Lawyers tell me, no, it is not. The royals, boys, elegant and noble creatures. Well, not all the time. Prince Philip has never been backwards in coming forwards. Phil drops the F-bomb as frequently as he unveils plaques. That look, <laughs> the look, it's not like he just swore. I was like, he gave him the look like, listen, mate, what you saying to you is, yeah, if you, if you don't want it to kick off, take the picture, mate, all right, or we can take this outside. Do you want a bit of this? Do you want a bit of this? He doesn't put up with any nonsense, never has, never will. He smells manure at 50 paces and just will not tolerate it in his drawing room. When Harry and Meghan attended the Grenfell cookbook launch, Harry lived up to his more prominent title of the Prince of Mischief by stealing some food. <laughs> Give up the sandwich, Harry. You've been busted. If only I knew someone who could tell us an anecdote about the royals and food. Oh, hello, Katie. A favourite story of mine was during a tour of um, Canada in 2016, where the couple was served a local delicacy. 
of clams that just were so phallic. I mean, they looked like penises. And there was no mistaking that they looked like penises. And you could see William and Kate just looking at them, knowing that they were going to have to tackle them, put one in their mouths, and just jolly well get on with it. The best thing to do is have a good giggle about it. And that's exactly what they did. And of course, those were the front page pictures the next day. Two days after the birth of his third child, William attended the Anzac Day ceremony at Westminster Abbey. He may have been there in body, but he definitely wasn't there in spirit. <laughs> you can almost hear the Peppa Pig theme tune repeating in his head. Pay close attention to Charles's hand in this next clip. As he puts his hand on the railing, the back and he's goosed her. How rude. So Prince Charles finds he has something sticky on his hand and he puts his arm around Princess Diana and wipes it on her white dress. I mean he could well have been wiping it onto the suit of the person standing next to her but it looks suspiciously like Diana's white skirt. I thought initially he was just sort of you know giving a loving fairly sexual grab but no it's something even worse it's like an animal who's you know, done a poo and just goes, well, that's not very gentlemanly, is it? I think Diana would have been incredibly annoyed. You've been royally busted, Charlie boy. One is definitely not amused. Attached. Harry and Meghan's now infamous engagement interview here, royally dissected by our cock-up catching celebs. No, I'd, I'd never, yeah. never even heard about her until this friend said, Meghan Markle, I was like, right, OK, give me, give me the background, what's, <laughs> like what's going on here? Never heard of Meghan Markle. Never heard of, but you've seen her, don't you? You've seen her, Big Daddy. Come on. So no, I'd never, I'd, I'd never watched Suits. I'd, I'd never heard of Meghan before. Mm. I definitely didn't, you know, watch Suits. Everything was just perfect. It was this beautiful woman just sort of literally tripped and fell into my life. I <laughs> fell into her life. She's gripping his hand really tight, and she's thinking, stick to the script, Harry. She was sitting there. I was like, okay, well, I really have to up, up, up my game. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, did I, did I say everything right? Was that, was that? And she's like, you did well, Harry. And you're like, thanks, Megan. I've noticed about Megan when she is not lost for words, but wants to kind of distract or dismiss something, she goes, <laughs> so it's kind of head roll. <laughs> we see you, Megan. We see you. Nothing is more awful than being played in public. He was markled and had a complete personality transplant and out went the levity and in came the gravitas but it's not genuine gravitas it's very weighty money and people rarely don't be like they are not as important as they think they are and they are certainly not as well informed and they are certainly not as evolved or as well educated and they dare to lecture us. I mean, who the hell do they think they are? I mean, they are entirely above themselves. And they need to remember their place. Charles. The Queen here giving a commemorative speech in honor of Charles's 50th birthday at Buckingham Palace. In fact, before we hear from the birthday boy himself, here's Paul Burrell to explain the protocol around how to address Her Majesty. The first time you address Her Majesty the Queen, it's Your Majesty. The second time, in conversation, it's ma'am, as in jam. Not ma'am, it's ma'am. Get it right. Mummy. <laughs> Coupled with Your Majesty, I really am enormously grateful. Charles royally cocked up there. Harry being awarded his provisional flying wings by none other than his very own daddy. So sweet. Seems even royals get excited to meet the royals. In, in this footage, you, you see the, the mutual respect between father and son. You've got the, the future king presenting Harry with his wings. So a really important moment in Harry's military career. Did, he, did Prince Charles shake everyone else's hand? I want him to 
hugging. Hello, young man. What do you do? Well, I, uh, I just sort of open stuff and, and present plaques. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Oh, that is such a moment. Hug him. <laughs> Break the code. It's very strange. To the outside world, we see it as a sterile in environment where little love is involved. But behind closed doors, they do embrace. I think Harry and Charles has quite a good Prince Harry and Prince Charles have quite a good relationship because their little like little sneaky ways, their little banters together, that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty million people tuned in to watch the royal wedding of the century. Therefore, one would hope Lady Di would know the name of the man she's about to marry. I, Diana Francis. I, Diana Francis. Take thee, Charles Philip Arthur George. Take thee, Philip Charles Arthur George. Oh. Oh. She royally cocked that up. At least no one noticed. Take thee, Charles Philip Arthur George. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge try their hand at DJing while on tour in Australia. Kate seems pretty good, actually. I wonder if she learnt it from her father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> what a tune. <laughs> oh, take that crazy rhythm. Take that crazy rhythm.